knowledge sharing sessions. So we have been doing this series of you know, knowledge sharing sessions as part of our overall HR carnival. And we are glad that we are meeting for the 10th consecutive week as part of our ongoing knowledge sharing and interactive sessions. So before we go into the topic today, a brief about HR Carnival. This is a series of summer carnival events that NIPM Kerala chapter organizes together, you know, bringing in the HR fraternity, uh, bringing in various initiatives together. Uh, a brief about some of the initiatives. We have a dedicated focused initiative which takes care of you know, uh, career of upliftment and grooming for women employees, which we call as Launcher. There is a dedicated work stream which is trying to ensure that you know, we bring in the knowledge among the B-School students through business quiz. There is a work stream which focuses on bringing in the knowledge awareness among the HR professionals through business knowledge and uh, competitions. There is a dedicated initiative as part of you know, audio rooms. Uh, we, we, we ensure that every Thursdays or Fridays you know, we come together with certain topics. We started this in the first week of March and today we are meeting it for the 10th consecutive week. And then we have plans up to June, July for us to stay updated on some of the relevant trends. So those are some key initiatives that we have. But before we get into the topic today, we would like to take a few minutes to cover about our upcoming uh, focused initiatives of our DA workshop. There's one more work stream that is trying to ensure that we bring in some of the DA practices together. To speak about that, I will invite our team member, Jasmi, onto the stage. And after Jasmi, we'll get into the topic today. With that, I invite Jasmi to give a brief about the DA initiatives. Thank you so much. From my angel to Malcolm Forbes, to John F. Kennedy, Kiran Majumda, to Roshni Nader, all these eminent personalities have been talking about creating a more diverse, equitable, and inclusive society. I'm Jismi Jose, and I'm one of the team members in the DEI cell. And today, I feel extremely proud and privileged to be addressing such uh, eminent uh, crowd that we have today. As you all know, DEI is a crucial aspect of any successful and sustainable organization. And a diverse, equitable, a different workplace, it not only promotes innovation, creativity, but it also helps to attract and retain uh, top talent and build a positive brand reputation. We are glad to share that under the DEI cell of NIPM Kerala chapter, there are a number of initiatives which are underway and we are proud to announce an expert talk on the topic by Dr. Bindu Shivashankaran Naya. She has worn multiple hats in her illustrious career. She is a people, culture, DEI and ESG strategist she is a speaker, writer, TV show producer, and a startup mentor. Ooh, a big list. And uh, all these achievements she has, and she is going to be doing a session for all of us, which is going to be happening on 20, 27th of this month. I request all the members who have gathered here today to kindly nominate yourself for the session and also uh, you know, share it with your team members so that they are aware of this upcoming session hosted by NIPM Kerala chapter. In this session, we will be covering a number of aspects under the DEI, that is in an organization, how to promote a DEI culture, how to promote a positive environment for the same, the strategies for creating a more diverse and inclusive workplace to identify the gap areas and the most important, how to develop an action plan. Wow, so many takeaways and I'm very eagerly waiting for the session to start. So please grab onto the opportunity and I request all the members who have gathered here today to kindly register yourself for the workshop that is going to be happening on May 27th. We're also very excited to share one more very new thing which is going to be uh, launching very soon or uh, can i say that it's going to be launched right now well we are going to be bringing a new platform to recognize and celebrate different organizations who have shown their commitment to dei through the dei awards yes this is the first time that it is going to be happening in kerala and the first time it is also going to be happening in india this it this awards which we are going to be which we are launching right now it has a wonderful tagline changing conversations 
and this simple tagline actually summarizes what our current society requires in the space of dei we want people to talk about dei we want people to share their inputs on the same to share their best practices and as a society how we can be more diverse and inclusive so this platform this dei awards platform this will help the companies or support the companies to showcase their efforts in promoting diversity equity and inclusion in a workplace it will also provide them with an opportunity to learn from each other to learn from each other the best practices share their knowledge and experience and how as an ipm and how as a society as an hr community as a together how we can collaborate to advance the dei initiatives the competition is going to be happening in the month of june 2023 and we have a gala finale also which is being in progress for the same all the participating organizations they will win cash prizes mementos citations certificates coaching sessions oh, there are a number of benefits for all the participating companies which are going to be part of this award ceremony so we request all your support your ideas and participation to make this event a grand success by working together we can build a more equitable and just society one organization at a time so fast in your seat belts thank you everybody and uh, thanks for your kind attention and once again a proud uh, mentee is sitting here of, from the nipm kerala chapter thank you everybody thanks to me for sharing the insight and we look forward uh, for active participation as part of the da summit so now coming back to the topic for the day right uh, we have been covering various knowledge sharing and up upcoming trends in as part of our regular sharing sessions so today we have got an interesting topic which talks about well all of us go to company we work and then you know we take care of our employees we ensure no the profitability is given to the uh, stakeholders uh we take care of you no know, uh the key responsibilities around us but the key element is also you know, how do you take care of the environment how do you take care of the society how do you, you know give back to the society those are also some key elements right a lot of companies have a focus to csr initiatives and uh, there are promising elements that happens from an element of you no know, sustainability and contributing back to the uh society and ensuring that your employees are engaged through the journey that's a key element that today corporates are uh, emerging and building on we do see uh, you no know, focus on the carbon blueprint and few more steps coming our way as we read many of the emerging trends so to share some light around the similar topic you no know, we have got an eminent person with us a uh, brief about the speaker for the today we have with us today uh, ms bindu vishwanath who is the director of human resource from trelbo india based in bangalore uh, she joins us today with close to 20 years of professional work experience she has spent her initial first 10 years with coaching in various companies as an hr professional and for the last 12 years she has been associated with trelborg india and uh, uh, when you when you speak with somebody you know has been with the company for 10 to 12 years right they would have got a complete exposure of you know, how the company works together so she has been been able to know get through the you know product of end to end ownership in terms of how the company comes together to make a product as well as you know give back to the society she is also the part of the csr team and a sustainability champion that makes it more interesting for us in terms of what more we can learn from her you know, through real time experiences and uh, in terms of her basics uh, she is actually in bsc chemistry but she has also done her mba in human resource and she has also taken time to complete her post graduate certification in hr from iim koikkoad and uh, in terms of credentials she is also a belbin accredited professional which talks about you know, how do you take care of team building and team handling stuff so with all uh, interest face now we will invite uh, ms bindu vishwanath onto the stage uh, Bindu, uh, welcome, and behalf of NIPM uh, Kerala chapter, we welcome you again for the session today. Uh, the stage is all yours. That we would like to hear from you and see, you know, how you can you know, share some insights on sustainability and employee engagement. And we can take up the questions and then, as per the flow, Bindu has a business case that she would like to walk us through. Though the next few minutes, for the 20-30 minutes, she will walk us through in terms of the company insight. Uh, we will invite participants keep going with the questions in the chat, and we will take it at the end on the flow. So, Bindu, over to you. and we are all here to be happy thank you murli and uh, uh, it's a pleasure to be a part of this session 
And uh, I could hear just, I mean, uh, the earlier speaker talking about DE and I initiative. And uh, you know that that is a very important element of sustainability initiatives also, at least in Trelleborg. So um, thank you for inviting me to be a part of this session. And uh, before getting into uh, the presentation, which I have prepared to share with you, let me uh, talk a little bit about the sustainability champion title, which I hold in Trelleborg. So uh, apart from the HR, uh, I mean, responsibilities I'm having, the sustainability champion is something which is quite interesting. So you know that most of the organization has a lot of uh, importance or dedication towards the sustainability initiatives. And as a sustainability champion in my business area, what I'm supposed to do is to talk about it, to promote it, to understand employees' uh, requirements in terms of sustainability and uh, come up with action items. So. I really enjoy that uh, role more than the human resource uh, uh, position, director position. And it's always a pleasure to get in touch with employees to understand their requirements in terms of uh, their sustainability initiatives. So thank you, Murli, and uh, thank you, NIPM, for inviting, inviting me to the session. Let me share my presentation, and then we can start. And as Murli said, uh, I'm open to questions at towards the end of the session okay so the topic what i'm going to talk about is sustainability and employee engagement how sustainability can drive employee engagement in the organization and this is something what we do in trellebook and that is what i'm going to share and uh, as Murli mentioned, uh, the, the positions what I am handling is uh, human resource in charge and sustainability champion. So let me talk a little bit about my organization to start with. Before that, what, is, what are the topics we are covering in uh, the coming slides? So there are a couple of slides which talks about what is Trellebook, that is the organization's name, and what we are into and what is, what is the, uh, I mean, how are we based in India? Then a uh, couple of slides that are talking about future generations and what is their outlook on sustainability and what is Trellebook sustainability framework. And uh, let's talk about a little bit about the sustainability wheel, what we have in Trellebook, some of the activities and how employees participate in these activities and how do we embed uh, the sustainability at workplace and how are we measuring the impact of sustainability in terms of uh, driving employee engagement and towards the end we do have q a session so if there is something which is not clear yeah i'm open to questions in between also so that uh, we can clarify it and move ahead so let me start so about Trellebook Group, I'm a part of Trellebook Group. And uh, uh, this is, I mean, the group is a polymer-based engineer manufacturing uh, organization. And this is uh, founded in 19, 1905. And you can see the rich culture in terms of uh, the technical knowledge, technical know-how, and in terms of presence across various countries, you can very well identify from the slide. We are present in almost 50 different countries around the world, and we do have 20,000 plus employees around the world. And there is a presence of, uh, I mean, we do have presence of 100 uh, we do have 100 different manufacturing facilities and these manufacturing facilities are for different product ranges which we can talk about a little bit in the coming slides so uh, that was about the group as such and talking about trellebook's presence in india so there are three business areas of trellebook in india uh, the first one is in Ahmedabad, and this is called Trellebook Marine, System, Marine Systems, and this is totally a different entity. And towards the south in Bangalore, we do have two different business areas of Trellebook. The first one is Trellebook Ceiling Solution, and the second one is Trellebook Industrial Products. So altogether in Bangalore, we do have 900 plus employees, including the manufacturing setup. And these two are the facilities. I mean, the pictures are the facilities which we have in Bangalore. So the product what we manufacture in Bangalore, where I'm I'm belonging to, which is a Trellebook sealing solution, we manufacture, I mean, hydraulic and non-hydraulic seals, which goes into static and dynamic applications. So uh, I mean, this is the, this is a business concept concept overall. Whatever man 
products we are manufacturing. When I am saying we, Trelleborg is manufacturing, they cater to three major areas. Either they seal a particular environment or damp the particular environment or protect the particular environment. So all the products what we manufacture falls into one of these categories. This is just to give an idea about what is Trelleborg and what is the product what we are manufacturing. And talking about the segments where our product goes into, you name it, and all the segments are there. Starting from aerospace, oil and gas, um, I mean, automotive segment, the EV segment also, healthcare segments, agriculture, infrastructure. So any segment, you name it, and we do have our various products going into these segments in various applications. So that is about the organization as such. Now, let's talk about the topic, which is sustainability. I could hear the previous uh, speakers or, in, I mean, the introduction, in the introduction, uh, I mean, Murli and others talking about various aspects related to sustainability. And I'm sure you also might have heard different terms like recycling, I mean, uh, clean energy, then CO2 emission, what else, I mean, uh, um, uh, reusing, reusing or recycling some of the products and environment related aspects and all. So it depends on the organization what they are going to concentrate. And all of this, yes, it is a part of sustainability. But when we talk about Trelleborg sustainability framework, we, we call it as protecting the essential. So whatever is essential for us, it is our responsibility to protect it. And what we mean by protecting the essential is nothing but as a responsible employee of the organization, we strive to minimize the negative impacts what we create towards a society. And we would like to maximize, and we are trying our level best to maximize our positive impacts. And that is what we meant by protecting the essential. And that is the uh, Trelleborg sustainability whatever framework we have prepared, it's based on this particular tagline, protecting the essential. So yeah, why should we focus on sustainability? There is, it, it's a buzzword and every single organization, wherever we go, we can talk about, we, we hear about sustainable products. I mean, that sort of product, this sort of product, sustainable packaging, recycled products. So why is it that there is a whole lot of focus on sustainability? and well, that is what our current and future generation value the most. So when we are talking about the current and future generation, whether it is Generation X, Millennials, or Generation Y, they value or they have a whole lot of importance towards sustainability and sustainability initiatives. And there are various studies which showcases how much important they give, importance they give. I'm talking about the future generation, especially Millennials, and Gen Z, how much importance they give to the sustainable aspects. So this is a survey. These are experts from a survey done by Kushman and Wakefield. It is available in uh, the public domain. So one of the studies showcases that 29% of millennials place environment as their top concern out of 20 options. And they believe that businesses should try to improve and protect the environment. So the millennials or the current generation and the future generation, they think that environment is very important and the, the organization has to focus a lot on uh, protecting the essentials or coming up with sustainable, uh, I mean, activities which will protect the essential. And the other pictures also, there is a study which showcases that millennials are ready to pay more to buy an EV or they are more interested to use an electric vehicle. The third picture, I mean, that, I mean, the data shows that the millennials are ready to pay 25% more for a sustainable product. So these are just some of the data points which showcases that how much sustainability is important for the future generation. And uh, when I'm saying future generation, it includes the Gen Z and the millennials. Now, again, from the same survey from Kushman and Wakefield, the, the, uh, this is again expert from that particular survey. So it states that millennials are mobile, which we know they are mobile, and they prefer to stay in cities with a diverse and inclusive culture, livability, and focus on sustainability. So they would prefer to stay in cities where they have a diverse culture, 
and there is a livability factor and the city should have a focus on sustainability. So all these depicts that the future generation look forward for sustainable initiatives and they would like to have a sustainable uh, environment around them. So talking about sustain in the uh, cities, in the previous slide, we just saw that millennials like to stay in cities with a sustainable outlook. So this is again an expert from the same survey, Kushman and Wakefield, where they have classified the cities based on two factors. And the two factors are uh, how is the real GDP growth and uh, how is the working age population growth? So these are the two variables they have compared and this is a projection by 2030. So I just want to concentrate on the third quadrant which talks about the category leaders. You can see most of the Indian cities fall into that category, leaders category. And what does it say? The leaders category is nothing but these are the cities where the real GDP growth is going to happen through the working age population. And what is going to be the future working age population? It's none other than the millennials and the Gen Z. And in the previous slide, we saw that they would like to stay in cities with a sustainable outlook, with diverse and inclusive culture. So it's very important that if we have to retain these workforce, future workforce, the organizations in these cities has to concentrate or work on the topics which is interesting towards the future generation. So uh, I just want to depict, I, I'm I was just trying to showcase the experts from the survey and trying to make it clear that it is very important. Sustainability is very key for the millennials and the future generation, the Gen Z and the millennials. So this is, uh, this is some data points which showcases how important it is for the future generation. Now, I'm taking a pause here. Um, now we are going to talk about, one second, sorry. <clears throat> Now we are going to talk about, we understood how much important sustainability is for the millennials. Now we are going to talk about uh, what is Trellebook sustainability framework and how is it going to drive employee engagement. So uh, protecting the essential is a tagline for Trellebook. And by protecting the essential, what we mean is all the employees have to strive towards negative, I mean, minimizing our negative impacts to the society and maximizing our positive impacts. Now, let's let's look at the framework. I know that this is a, a little bit complicated slide with a lot of data, but we are not going to talk a lot about this because this slide is what we do in Trello Book in terms of all the action items and the targets we have set for various sustainability initiatives. But in this slide, we will just focus on the middle portion, the circle. So what are the key elements which is coming under protect, when we say protecting the essential in Trello book? There are three key elements which we look into in terms of sustainability initiatives. And the first and foremost is we would like to be compliant in all aspects, whether it is local, local laws or Trello book code of conduct or the group policies, we would like to be 100% compliant. So that is very important for us. And the number two is the operations. And when we talk about operations for Trellebook, I mean, you know that Trellebook is a manufacturing organization and the various operations in Trellebook, uh, like manufacturing, purchasing, supply chain, and people management, sales, which is one of the key operations, all fall under this operation segment. And there are key areas or targets which are set under this operations so that employees directly or knowingly or unknowingly contribute towards these activities and try to achieve these targets set for various operations. And there are guidelines also what they, ha they have to do in terms of each of these processes which they are into. And the third portion is social engagement. And this is the area where we give back to the society. When we say we give back to the society, the activities which is coming under this element these are the ones which is specifically focusing on the society and the upliftment of the society. And when I say society, each, uh, I mean, a Trello book unit has to focus on 
the area which which where they are belonging to. For example, if I'm talking about Trellebog Ceiling Solutions Bangalore, we try to look into the society in and around us in Bangalore as well as in Karnataka. So there are a lot of activities which we have taken up for the upliftment of various groups in the society. And we are going to talk about some of it in, in the coming slides. So in general, what we are saying is, by protecting the essential, we focus on three elements. The first one is compliance. Each and every employee has to be compliant with the local rules and regulations, the Trellebo Code of Conduct. And when it comes to operations, there are specific targets for each operations, which is related to sustainability. And when it comes to social engagement, we try to give back to the society from uh, uh, the, through the activities which we have developed under the sustainability initiatives. So this is what we mentioned about it's a sustainability wheel. And uh, uh, yeah, the three elements are also mentioned, compliance, operations, and the social engagement. What is What builds the foundation for these elements? So when it comes to compliance, yeah, every organization's code of conduct and the policies are the foundation for how to be compliant. I mean, these code of conduct really helps the employee to be compliant with the local rules and regulations and how to act in terms of various business transactions. And when it comes to operations, as I mentioned, there are different various operations within the organizations like manufacturing, supply chain, purchasing, sales. And the thing is, like, there are excellence program which helps the employees to understand what is the right way to do the things in each of these operations. How can they minimize the waste? What is the right process to operate? Uh, I mean, reduce the energy. When it comes to sale, what is the right approach to do the selling? I mean, do a value selling. When it comes to people excellence, what are the key things which a manager or the people manager has to take care? When it, uh, when it comes to managing a people. So these excellence program actually helps the employees to understand what is the right way to do things and how they can achieve the various targets set in these functional areas in, in under the sustainability. Now, the third element, as I mentioned, is a social engagement. And the framework for the social engagement is definitely the local government rules and the Trellebog rules. So there are CSR guidelines, which every organization has to follow. And it, it generally, it will be a combination of uh, the local uh, government, uh, government rules. India has got CSR guidelines and uh, Trellebog also follows the UN SDGs. And that also has to be um, globally. Group also has got CSR sustainability guidelines, which every Trellebog unit has to follow. So what I'm talking about is uh, these are the three elements each and every employee has to look into. There are clear guidelines which help them to understand what exactly they have to do in terms of their area. And knowingly or unknowingly, they contribute towards the sustainability initiative. Some of the actions are, are actually unknowingly done. Like, for example, um, when it comes to, sorry, when it comes to uh, the manufacturing process, uh, an operator might not know what exactly the target set for reducing the energy, reducing the energy, or what is the right way. Sorry, what exactly uh, the target set for reducing the uh, power consumption. But the the team leader or the cell leader might have given him instructions or the manufacturing excellence program give him idea what is the right way to do things. And when he follows that right way, then the right process, then automatically this energy reduction happens or energy excellence happens. So I'm just trying to make it clear that every single employee might not be directly knowing what are the targets, but every single employee knows that these are the elements which Trellebog, are con Trellebog is concentrating. And it's every single employees to address the factors related to sustainability initiatives in their own function. 
Now, this is just a little bit more about what exactly we are meaning by com being compliant and what are the targets we have set for operations and what is that we need to focus under social engagement initiatives. So when we when we are talking about compliance, I mean, every organization will have these rules. Uh, the first one is anti-bribery and corruption. The second is competition and trade compliance. Uh, the third one is definitely, I mean, all the organization will have this human rights where, uh, I mean, non-discrimination and sexual harassment, all these falls in this category. Supplier evaluation, what should be the right way to deal with a, with a supplier. So these elements are very important to be compliant and every, every employee is aware of it. Now, when it comes to operation, some of the targets set are the first one and the most important one is energy, where we have to switch to renewables and the target for the current year is we have to reduce 3% consumption through uh, various energy excellence program. The second one is safety at work that we, uh, we do not want any accidents and zero accident in all Trellebook production units. That's what we have set in terms of safety. When it comes to CO2 emission, we concentrate on scope one and scope two. And the target we have set is we have to reduce our carbon emission by 50% by the year 2025. And when it comes to supply chain, yeah, you are talking about eco-friendly packaging. And there are new product development initiatives which is happening. And for sure, the R&D team is working on the polymers for tomorrow based on renewable raw materials. So all these targets, are focusing on various functions and knowingly or unknowingly each employee in the organization contributes towards achieving these targets and when it comes to social engagement they again under social engagement we concentrate on three different buckets first one is education second one is sports and third one is environmental activities so these are the three buckets and most of our activities fall in these three buckets under social engagement. So uh, this is just to highlight some of the initiatives we have done under each of these um, uh, sustainability uh, elements. The first one we spoke about operations, and uh, this is just an example, wonderful example of uh, how our office function. This is our Bangalore office, which is completely functioning on the solar panel and the solar energy uh, I mean, generated through the panel. And most of the Trelleborg plants do have an electric charging points, including the Bangalore. And we do have, including the Bangalore plant, and we do have electric vehicles also for official commuting as well as uh, personal use. And uh, uh, when I say personal use, it's I'm, I'm talking about usage for uh, official commuting, not completely personal. And uh, when it comes to, uh, machine machineries there are energy monitoring systems or uh, i mean processes which is set to monitor what is energy consumption for each of the manufacturing machines and employees are, are i mean a train to look into how it should be read and how it should be interpreted and this is one of the greatest achievement we had in 2022 we were, we were able to reduce our carbon emission by 19% in 2022 and it was widely acknowledged so it is not a single person's effect. It's a collective effort by all the manufacturing units and not only manufacturing, all the employees associated with uh, the various functions. Uh, when, when I talk about various functions, manufacturing, supply chain, purchasing, sales and all. So this is one of the biggest achievements which we have done in terms of reducing the CO2 emissions. Uh, this is uh, very interesting, the social engagement highlights. When we talk about compliance and when we talk about operations, those are automatically we fall into it. But when it comes to social engagement, employees needs to have an interest. It's definitely not a mandatory um, aspect or mandatory element. This is where the interest of employees comes into picture and they actively uh, involve or indulge in many of the social engagement uh, activities which Trelleborg follows. And I've just put some of the pictures. It's, uh, these are activities not only in Bangalore, but from outside. But majority of the activities, uh, these um, pictures are from Bangalore plant, uh, Bangalore uh, of Trelleborg Sealing Solutions, Bangalore only. We are, we concentrate a lot on, uh, I mean, implanting solar street lights in various villages. 
we do have a very flag important flagship program in terms of giving scholarship to the needy um, girl children mainly. And this scholarship program we are doing with the uh, Akshay Patra Foundation since 2016. And I could proudly say that we have supported almost around uh, 1,300 students. Um, th we have released around 1,300 scholarships all through these years. And many girls, they have successfully completed their post-graduation, uh, um, I mean, engineering graduation, and they have got into uh, working streams and it, it's 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 really proud to say that this is a very important flagship program for Trello Book Ceiling Solutions Bangalore and it is running quite successfully. Many girl childs and not only girl childs, many kids have uh, been benefited out of this program. And there are other initiatives like tree plantation drives and we we prepare crash for the kids and we there are blood donation drives organized by the employees on regular basis. What I meant to say is organizations can make different activities, but if it is not communicated properly and if there is no common vision shared with the employees, the interest level of employees and participation of employees becomes minimal and this just becomes a normal monotonous uh, target for each organization. That is not how it has to run. It has to run hand in hand with both the parties. Employees also should participate and organizations should also have clear objectives, what they want to do in terms of giving back to the society. Now, uh, now we are talking about how are we, I mean, improving or um, uh, ensuring that there are enough employee participation. And, 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 and I, as I spoke in the earlier slide, the first and foremost thing is there needs to be a clear communication on the vision. There needs to be continuous enforcement about what is what is the organization's vision in terms of sustainability initiatives. What are they expecting and what do employees expect? And is there a collaboration between what the employees expect and what organization wants? And there needs to be a walk. I mean, uh, all the leaders needs to walk the talk. Uh, when it comes to these kind of initiatives and talking about it and sharing the success stories and all. Now, uh, these are some of the areas where employees have, is been um, actively participating uh, when it comes to the social responsibility, social activities uh, under the sustainability. Now, I, I can proudly say that um, when, when we talk about the scholarship initiatives, there are different employ various employees who are really interested to be a mentor for these beneficiaries and there are employees who are ready to talk up ready to, uh, i mean volunteer in terms of giving training programs to the kids in the schools various subjects it could be it it could be english it could be language it could be on uh, environment it could be multiple but there are employees and and a good number of employees who are really interested in terms of giving or volunteering uh, programs in these kind of schools to the kids and uh, when it comes to plantation tree plantation drives um, immense participation from employees and there are aspects like in environmental cleaning, I mean, for example, a beach cleaning or or something like that, there, there is always, um, I mean, interest shown by the employees. So uh, when it comes to interest shown or involvement of employees, they can do it in two ways when it comes to Trello book. One is in the activities driven by the Trello book under the sustainability initiative. So these are organizational driven activities where employees participate. And let me tell you, employees are so interested that there are employee committees within the organization who work for the society. And when I say employee committees, uh, the nomination is done by them. The committee is formed by themselves the contribution for a particular activity that is also done by the employees it is completely managed by the employees and they run wonderful programs throughout the year and some of the their flagship programs are they organize they organize blood donation drives in every every other year except during the covid time and what they do is uh, they usually visit some of the ngos and hospitals I mean, I can recollect one of the recent incidents where they went to a hospital where it, it's a palliative care for kids and they could they spend some hours 
probably half a day or something. I mean, playing with the kids and uh, having a competition, small competition for the kids and sharing some gifts for the kids. So they share an hour with the inmates of various NGOs. That is another flagship program which they do. And they do organize a lot of donation drives and they call it Joy of Giving. And these donation drives are mainly for the kids. And in terms of giving them books, in terms of giving them clothes, in terms of giving them study materials, various things. And there is another program which they run, which is nothing but Feed the Need. And they started this wonderful program during the COVID time. Uh, you know that during the COVID time, there were many uh, people in, in the city where uh, the hotels or restaurants were not open and they were not able to have food and all. I still remember the employees came together and they put up this proposal. They, they, they formed this uh, Feed the Need program. So what they actually do is uh, employees are those who are willing. They can bring a lunch or a meal from their house and any number, I mean, 1, 2, 10, 15, anything. And the company or the organization will contribute equal number of meals, what employees have done. And this will be given to an NGO. The NGO will distribute it to the needy uh, program. It was a wonderful program. And many employees were uh, a part of this program. So what I'm trying to say is um, the employees' participation are in two ways. First is through the programs driven by the organization. And second is the employee committee themselves. They have various programs and through those programs. So immense participation. Now, if we, we spoke about why sustainability is important. We spoke about what is Trello Books framework, uh, you know, I mean, in sustainability. We spoke about what are the key initiatives we do under sustainability. We spoke about uh, how was employees' participation in terms of some of the sustainability initiatives. How do Trello Books and organization embed the sustainability or the concept of sustainability in workplace? And through, I can say through various steps. So some of the steps I can share, and I'm sure most of the organization might be following it. Uh, when an employee joins itself, the value creation in terms of sustainability, the importance of sustainability, we try to build in from the day one itself through the induction and various training programs. So the employees has to go through the code of conduct, the group policies, the excellence programs, whichever excellence programs they are into, their function is into, the compliance programs. And these programs helps to create how important sustainability is for the organization. So from the day one onwards, that starts. And once the training is over, the employee gets into the performance stage in whichever function they are. There are operational targets, like carbon emission, energy consumption, like we, uh, we saw earlier, new product development, waste management, diversity. It's a very key element of our uh, sustainability initiatives. And uh, some of the employees, they participate in the social engagement initiatives. So this is where they perform. So once the value creation is done, they get into the performance stage in terms of the sustainability initiatives, knowingly or unknowingly they are a part of all the uh, most of the initiatives now yes this is happening how do we reinforce this concept so it, it's not that we just do a training and the employees are have to perform that there it ends we have to continuously reinforce the topic again and again talk about it talk about the success stories share the success stories give them a helping hand guide them and that is where the sustainability champions and ambassadors comes into picture so most of the locations trello locations have a sustainability champion and that is one of their key responsibilities and we do have periodic sustainability summits within the organization where employees share some of their key achievements and other sites, if it is can be implemented or duplicated in their side, they take it up. Now, communication is very important in terms of, uh, I mean, policies around sustainabilities as well as the achievement also around, achievements also around sustainability. 
inside the internal, I mean, internal platforms as well as the external platforms. It's very important and we continuously do that. And for sure, we measure the sustainability, the impact of sustainability initiatives. What does employees have to talk about? How is it progressing? That is done through the employee engagement survey. We do um, once in every 18 months, usually once in, a once in a year, but now it has been shifted to once in 18 months. And the employee committees who works for the sustainability initi um, initiatives and society, they also play a key role in reinforcing the importance of these kind of activities. So, yes, value creation is done, performance is happening, reinforcement is happening. And how do we reward the best uh, initiatives? For sure, like any other organization, we also do have sustainability awards for each business area and at a group level also. And there is the group publishes annual reports in terms of all the activities, what is that Trello book has done, what is that Trello book is looking forward in terms of these areas. And this annual report, you can see it in Trello book website. So the last one is for 2021. 2022 is yet to be published. And each and every aspect uh, connected to the initiatives are mentioned in in uh, that report. So uh, this is how, I mean, in the earlier slide we spoke about, I spoke about the employee engagement survey, and that is an important tool where we measure, we try to measure the impact of sustainability initiatives and how employees perceive it. So there are various elements which we cover in, in the employee engagement survey, like company confidence, leadership, management, enablement, and so on and so forth. Apart from all these subjects, there are two important subjects which we cover. One is diversity and inclusion, and second is the social connection. So when we talk about diversity and inclusion, there are two questions which has been asked to all the employees in doing the survey. Number one is, do you feel respected in the organization? And does your company values diversity? So this is very important and this is measured uh, across or from uh, inputs are taken from all employees. And when it comes to social connection, the question what we ask from the employees to the employees is, does Trello book really allows us to make a positive difference uh, uh, in terms of giving back to the society? So the answers we get and the ratings we get uh, really help us to understand, are we progressing in the right manner? Uh, should we do these things more or should we change our approach? We get a good input from the uh, surveys which we do. It's, it's not only the annual surveys, I mean, where we try to measure the impact. Uh, we do the, um, uh, I mean, interviews, stay interviews, we call it stay interviews. Uh, especially after the just after the probation confirmation, we do talk to the uh, employees and try to understand how they value diversity. How do they see diversity and inclusion in the organization? Are they part of employee committees? Are they trying to contribute? Or is there something which they are having? So these kind of inputs are captured during the stay interviews, especially with the people uh, employees have just joined the organization and about to uh, complete their um, probation. So these are some of the elements which we use to measure the impact of our sustainability initiatives uh, within the uh, organization. So uh, in, in, in this session, we spoke about, we started with the uh, uh, what is the importance of sustainability? Why the why it is important for the current generation and the future generation? How do they perceive it? What is Trello Book's framework uh, in terms of sustainability? What are the key elements and activities? How do we involve employees in these um, activities? And how do we how do we create a value? How do we do a value creation in terms of sustainability initiatives? And how do we progress in terms of the entire cycle? within the organization and how do we measure the impact of sustainability when it comes to employee engagement. So that these are the topics we have covered. And that brings to the end of the session. So I just want to say that uh, employee engagement begins with understanding our employees. It's very important that what is we need to, as an organization, we need to understand what is important for them. and 
if sustainability is one important element for the employees in the organization, try to create common goals, try to create a do a value creation around these sustainability initiatives and that will help in a stronger bonding between the organization and the employee and that is going to help both the parties in the future and i would like to quote one of our senior members uh, in trello book once said about the sustainability initiatives i'm sorry i have uh, not even knows we fostered a culture of sustainability within our organization and we believe that everyone has a role to play in creating a more sustainable future and we are proud to be doing our part as an organization so it will be on all of us to contribute to help make a difference and that brings to the closure of the program and thank thank you uh, all the participants all the viewers as well as an ipm and i'm open to questions now I'll well, say, you know, uh, thanks for the comprehensive walkthrough. What we really uh, like this, you started by sharing the business acumen, understanding what the company does, and then talking about you know, what are the core principles and getting into, you know, where we in terms of focus on the environment and the society and how do you take the employees along? I mean, it was a very comprehensive business case, uh, which you had put together. And thanks for taking time, I would say, uh, you know, for putting this all together. It was a very comprehensive and we could understand from where it starts and what the business and then uh, what are the roles that does as you as you spoke about how do you balance between operations community and code of conduct and finding that sweet spot now in a venn diagram if there are three spots if there is a center point which is called the sweet spot which is talking about protecting the essentials uh, a lot of work that goes into you know, arriving at that center point and ensuring that you now we are coming to a sweet spot uh, you, uh, what what was also additional input that we got a uh, sense in terms of you know, how do you actually take the employees along i mean we can always have a you know, vision, mission on the board. Almost every company today talks about having a vision, mission on the board and certain principles and values. But ensuring that you take it to your employees, you know, engage them, uh, create the value, look at how the products are performing through data reports, and then ensuring that you know, we are reinforcing to bringing through employee committees, and then ensuring that some of the successful uh, achievements are rewarded. That was very comprehensive. So I would say, first of all, thank you, Ms. Bindu, for sharing us the real-time insights. As we speak about it, I would also invite participants, if there are any interesting questions, uh, feel free to put it on the chat and we can always pick it uh, uh, from your side. But let me take a shot with some of the pre-submitted questions, uh, Bindu, and uh, sure. uh, if you're okay. Is one is, uh, well, uh, as a company, definitely there is a lot of no uh, thoughts in terms of putting the vision, mission, and taking the employees along. Could you talk about what are the top three challenges from an HR perspective you observed in terms of sustaining you no know, the mission what the company has thought the top two or three challenges you have experienced yeah so uh first of all definitely is a timeline i mean we do have a lot of activities in terms of sustainability and under various buckets so to finish these activities and find the right ngos to do these activities i'm talking from the social engagement perspective so the other things are internal when it comes to compliance it's there are, there are no hurdles i mean there are enough systems and process to ensure that all those happens on time and when it comes to operations also there are enough analysis and process and reports which has been submitted to monitor whether everything is online but the key challenge happens when it comes to social engagement initiatives to find the right ngos you to understand that the money we spend goes to the right people and uh, involving i mean yes employees are interested but it's always not possible to bring in all the employees into picture i mean sometimes it is very difficult due to various uh, i mean project deadlines or other uh, issues so giving opportunity to all employees these could be the three big concerns first is finding the right ngo second is ensuring that whatever an organization is spending reaches the right person and giving an opportunity for uh, um, all the employees for being a part getting into these in activities and being a part that is also sometimes sometimes a challenge yeah that's it uh there were three three principles you did share to us uh, and as we speak we do receive uh, compliments coming in from some of our participants uh, now you mentioned about code of conduct which actually you know covers the key principles which employees will go through and then there are certain orientations that uh, is taken care 
uh, in terms of operations you also mentioned about supply chain so just curious to check that what principles that you follow no you also take it to your supply chain teams uh, how does that work so that is where our excellence programs comes into picture i am not an expert to talk about what exactly is covered under each excellence program because it is function oriented but it's very important that each function the people in each function they have to undergo these excellence program they have to complete the course they have to submit the uh, certificate and they really have to understand what exactly is being told and they Uh, actually perform based on those guidelines so it's very important that they follow uh, the guidelines and the processes mentioned in these excellence program and excellence programs play a key role in 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 all the functions uh, ensuring the right process is followed and the right methodology is adopted and the right way of and the right way uh, the things are uh, being done uh I'm not sure I answered your question. Uh, if yeah, you, you can did, come again, you did share a light. You did share a light, and that uh, makes sense. That not to how the strategies are thought through. Uh, the other curious question that also came up now when we were looking at the program is uh, typically, you know, any company in which does a program like this, right? Uh, always the business will have their point of view, employees will have their point of view, and HR when we facilitate these initiatives, you know, we will also have certain point of view, and we will have yes and no for a lot of initiatives, right? how do you ensure no you bring people onto the table because many a times within the organization there could be very converging and diverging views as hr no how do you yeah. play the role of no bringing people together so that is not my hr hat which plays the role that is my sustainability champion which plays the role so that is why it's very important for each organization to have a clear focus on sustainability initiatives it cannot be a just a function which does something so when we talk about trello book there is a clear structure there is an ambassador there is a head for sustainability at ba level and for sure group level also and whoever is heading the sustainability initiatives at the ba level and i am saying ba it is business area level that person will derive what should be operational level target for Uh, uh when it term, when it comes to operations for that particular ba there will be group level targets but what exactly has to be done for that particular business area the operations might be different the manufacturing process might be different so that flows from the top level and there are uh, sustainability champions and ambassadors who speak about it and for sure the heads in each side for example the gm of the op, i mean a uh, particular side will have equal responsibility to ensure that the targets are achieved or the activities are accomplished if there is any hurdle go back and understand what exactly has to be done what is the support required so it's a top driven approach and uh, uh, with clear guidelines it's it's uh, hard it's very hard to miss it out it, it's not that each functions take up their own initiatives there is a top driven approach and uh, uh, each function has to follow it and what i'm doing in terms of uh, uh, bringing everybody or understanding what exactly is happening it's not my hr hat it's actually the sustainability champion hat which uh, uh, plays a key role in understanding what are the initiatives and how far it is progressed and uh, should i report something or should i share it with uh, the group above so all those things comes um, in the role of sustainability champion in a way you given thread uh, not to the next question follow up to that how do you manage to switch up between your sustainability champion hat to a director hr hat oh it's very easy <laughs> because it it comes out of passion so hr is also a uh, it's it's also my passion but uh, uh, it it was not very interesting to me in the initial stage i i must admit that but the moment i get into it initiatives and talking about it participating in submits submits and sharing the key initiatives with employees the josh the employees are having the value creation it is doing and and let me tell you our employees are more gen wise um and they are very young crowd they actually feel proud about this initiatives and when i see their josh when i see their happiness when i see that happy moment then i got more involved into these activities and uh, that's that's how it i automatically fall into that uh, um, groove so whenever i need the hr yes i am an hr and when i need the sustainability uh, hat i wear that it, it's it, it comes automatically great great because uh, many a times uh, no a lot of times we say that uh, hr itself is 
in a larger umbrella and we have to know yeah. spend a lot of time yeah, yeah. how do you manage between other organizational priorities could be a toss right and uh, what you also mentioned is a very fair point that there should be sponsorship from the business teams of and course. we will have to facilitate the journey otherwise it could become like any other hr initiative which yeah. we don't actually don't want to uh, and let me tell you sorry to interrupt sustainability is definitely not an hr initiative in our organization sustainability itself is a key important function within under the group so it has got a lot of focus it is not a part of hr true yeah and uh, for the benefit of viewers uh, bindu did mention about annual report i i actually got a chance to view that earlier in the day and i could see that it was very comprehensive and it spoke about various initiatives and yeah. very curious to see you know how a company which is into polymer base talks about how they are able to quantify and reduce you know co2 emissions year on year i mean uh, very very few companies you know take that effort the industry where you are in and how you could actually contribute to the society right how you are able to take those focus initiatives to bring it down that was very holistic so i was just encouraging the audience that uh, whenever you have time feel free to visit the trailbox website and get a sense of how they are able to do the sustainability report initiatives we are at top of our but i would like to check with the audience if there are any specific questions now we can wait for another couple of minutes uh, i also wanted to check with you uh, in all this journey uh, bindu uh, through your journey of 20 years how do you manage to take care of yourself and your development you uh, know which is important for us you not know, to learn from you no know, leaders who join us for the session so um what has happened is uh, when i joined fellowbook i had a particular role and i had opportunity or i was given with opportunity to take up new new initiatives in the organization and i am very thankful for that for uh, my to trellbook and when you take up new new responsibilities it is very important for me to understand that initiative for example i can just let you know one is sustainability second is we are a manufacturing organization and in between we had to set up a captive it unit and and, and i'm completely unaware of how a software functions a software i mean company functions in bangalore i was completely unaware i have never worked in a software industry so it it became very inevitable or important for me to understand and learn how a software organization or an it setup works and uh, th i gradually got into it i talked to people i learned about how it is functioning so what i am saying is when you are given with new new opportunities it is very important if you want to be successful in that particular activity or fulfill the entire requirements or responsibilities given to you in that area it's very important that you learn or upgrade yourself and uh, gain more knowledge so yeah in a way the new responsibilities entrusted to me actually helped me in developing myself and i'm very thankful uh, to the organization for that thanks thanks for that so uh, audience on interest of time i think we should uh, wrap but just before the, we do that you know a brief summary of what we very briefly you know picked it from bindu for the day in terms ensure of you no know, sustainability is as a company let's ensure that you now we take time to have a focus on sustainability and what we can give back to the society uh, beyond what we do as a compliance and beyond what we do as a operations let's try to bring that social engagement and social element right and then uh, look at where we can have the protecting the essentials where we cannot minimize input uh, reduce the number of wastage and trying to see how every employee contributes very key message that she also gave us it's not important that every single employee should know what is the you know the big picture or vision statement but every employee should contribute towards the journey which could happen through the front facing and line managers because sometimes we take time to ensure that every employee understands you know what the vision vision but it's about ensuring every employee contributes to the larger vision that was a very key insight which we could pick it uh ensure your employees are taken along uh performs ratings take care of it through certain uh, initiatives take efforts to reinforce not bring in employee communities and ensure no you take time to reward some of the key essentials so those are some valuable inputs that we did receive uh, uh from bindu for the day and it is also very interesting to see that you know the diversity perspective right millennials what do they look for uh, we all we all know that the millennials look for flexibility they look for diverse inclusivity yeah. but the element of you no know, they also appreciate a sustainable workplace right a lot of uh, opportunity for all of us to learn through some of the real time examples and move forward so on behalf of nipm kerala chapter again thank you bindu for taking time and putting together a business case it was good to learn lot from the real time insights
feel free to not shoot out your questions through the NAPM Kerala window and we are happy to take it to Bindu or to the inappropriate facilities come back to you. Thank you all and happy weekend and uh, thanks for joining us.